to try to replace some of the production that they lost with Austin Hooper, but they haven't added running back there now in Atlanta. Todd Gurley is going back to Georgia. I tell you, the NFC South becoming just a fascinating place with Brady going to Tampa Bay and whatever other moves they may make. And now here, the Falcons are, are adding a piece who, if healthy, is obviously a huge difference maker. And I'll repeat, he's only 25 years old, and we all know New Orleans has been really good. So they're Shefty with the very latest. Again, it's a one-year deal for Todd Gurley in Atlanta. Well, let me bring back Swagoo and Dan. And Marcus, I'll start with you. We, we look at New Orleans and Tampa as the teams to beat. What are the Falcons now? We obviously have Matt Ryan, they have Julio Jones, and they add Todd Gurley. Gee, it's an anomaly. Listen, the Falcons beat the Saints last year. I want people to remember that. This is a team that had a plethora of talent. And adding in Todd Gurley to what they have offensively, we thought Atlanta would be a good team because of Matt Ryan, because of Julio Jones, Calvin really over there. So now you add in Todd Gurley, who I said, who previously uh, talked about him being more than just a running back out of the backfield. He's another weapon for Matt Ryan. Obviously, Atlanta needs to take a step forward from where they were last year. I like the signing. I really do. I like the fact that they got a guy that's familiar with the area. He's going to play in front of his home fans. I was covering Todd Gurley when he was at the University of Georgia. I am sure he is ecstatic to be back and playing with the Atlanta Falcons. This may be a at the end of the next season, this may be a big move we sitting here talking about uh, months from now. Dan Orlovsky, talk about fit. Let, let's talk about what specifically you can see him bringing to that offense with Matt Ryan. Yeah, first of all, Gurley still is a stretch zone, put his foot in the ground and go type of tailback, and that's a lot of what Atlanta still likes to do even past their Kyle Shanahan time as their play caller. So this is a good fit for this offense. The big step forward for this offense, now that Gurley's there, is those offensive linemen understanding how he runs as a running back, and then him as a running back, because they're a young offensive line, seeing how they block. That zone scheme is very much a feel thing. We often talk about football with just quarterbacks and feel so it'll be important for them to understand and feel each other um, when it comes to that blocking scheme but Gurley will understand how their their run scheme will fit together Greeny the, the Falcons are making some moves now like don't forget yes they lost Austin Hooper but they added, added Hayden Hurst they brought Dante Fowler over to their defensive line as well so the NFC South is becoming a very exciting division no question about it you saw a nice note there from Hembo on your screen they were third to worst in rushing in the National Football League last year, maybe Todd Gurley makes a big difference there. All right, that's our breaking news this morning. Todd Gurley to Atlanta. Elsewhere, the Dolphins have spent nearly $110 million guaranteed dollars in free agency already this offseason. A big part of it is Byron Jones, $57 million guaranteed for the corner, third most given to any free agent so far this offseason. They also bring in a linebacker, Kyle Van Noy, staying in the division. He had 35 pressures last year, 11 more than any Dolphins player did. Miami was last in the league in pressure percentage a year ago. And defensive end Shaq Lawson will also boost the Dolphins' defense that ranked last in the NFL in opponents' QBR and sacks last year. He had a career-high six-and-a-half sacks last season. Now, the question remains in Miami, what are they going to do about the quarterback position? And if we can once again look at what people are doing on social media, on Joe Burrow's Twitter page, if you look at which tweets he liked, he liked this tweet from Bleacher Report Gridiron running through some of the Dolphins' moves from this offseason. So Shefty sort of scolded us this morning for paying too much attention to that stuff. But listen, it is what it is. Here's <laughs> Jeff Darlington, our NFL insider. You live in Miami. You covered that team. I'm you know here for it. It, it, it is what it is, right? He's, he's, he's 21 years old and he's liking posts on social media. Let's talk about the Dolphins piece of this. There are stories that suggest that they like Burrow. They'd have to go up to number one to get him. They've been looking at Tua Tagovailoa for a very long time. What do we know about the way the Dolphins, who currently sit at number five in the draft, are approaching the quarterback situation? Well, to be very clear, Greeny, I can tell you that the Dolphins love Joe Burrow. They really do. But that's like saying I love Maseratis. It's, it's still a matter of what I'm willing to pay for something, what I can afford to pay for something, knowing that there's a lot of other things I should be buying instead. The Dolphins have to answer that question. They have.
have three first round picks. Are they willing to give all of that up to go and get Burrow? And then in that vein, are the Bengals willing to take three first round picks for Burrow? So certainly it's something that we can continue to keep an eye on. And, and yeah, I'm sure Joe Burrow would love the opportunity to play for a building team in South Florida. That too uh, makes a lot of sense. But again, it still comes back to to, to get a deal, you got to have two sides. And to that point, it does at least feel like the Dolphins, in some capacity, to get two or Burrow, will have to make a move, especially with the Chargers at six, sitting right behind them, probably looking potentially at that spot with the Lions at number three to have to move in there for Tua. And then, Greeny, if you're going to give up a lot to get to number three to get Tua, Maybe you just uh, see if you can get all the way up to number one and get the guy that you truly want. So the Dolphins definitely have a lot to weigh on their minds these coming months. No doubt. Uh, Jeff Darlington, thank you very much. One quick comment here from Orlovsky and Spears. And, and Dan, you've been looking at Joe Burrow and you love it. If they offered you three first round picks for the right to draft Joe Burrow, if you're Cincinnati, would you take it? No, Greeny. Let me make myself very clear. No. The most important person in an organization is the head coach until you find the quarterback. I don't care what Miami offers me. I'm not giving up the chance to draft Joe Burrow number one. Three first round picks we saw with Cleveland recently and Minnesota recently. I don't see them winning the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes was traded up for and he changed the Chiefs organization. I'm not giving up Joe Burrow if I'm the Cincinnati Bengals. Swagoo, what do you think? How about Tua? They're not going to be able to sit still at number five and get him either. So what do you think the Dolphins need to do here? Trade those two or three first-round picks and go up and get Joe Burrow. Listen, three first-round picks would be very enticing to the Cincinnati Bengals, who have more holes to fill. Obviously, Joe Burrow has been their guy, the catalyst. And Everybody knows he's going number one. But, Dan, if somebody got on the phone and said, we will give you three first-round picks to come up and get your number one with other quarterbacks in this draft, I think I'd do it. The top of the draft is going to be very interesting, at minimum at number three and maybe all the way to number one. Guys, stay with me. We're just getting started. As we continue, we've talked a lot about Dak getting franchised. Well, the Titans have franchised Derrick Henry, and one of our guys thinks he shouldn't even consider signing it. Could that be the holdout that changes the NFL season? We'll talk about that after we try to answer this. Dominique is going to join us, and he will try to answer from Sneaky Hembo. Which quarterback threw the most touchdowns in a season under Bruce Arians as head coach or offensive coordinator?